Hello everyone, this is Aaron Fitch from ATF Gaming and welcome back to NASCAR Heat Evolution. We are going to be racing at Texas today, but let's see where we finished last race. Oh yeah, last race was Martinsville. We had a really good car, as we normally do at short tracks in this game. Finished sixth. I can't remember if that was um, where I hoped to finish or not. I, I spent a while since I've recorded NASCAR Heat, so we're going to get back into things. We are 17th in the point standings. I believe that means we are one position out of the chase. So, let's try to back up our decent finish with another good run at Texas here. Dale Earnhardt Jr. won both his first nationwide race and first Spring Cup race at Texas Motor Speedway. They should probably change that to Xfinity because that's the series name now. It was In 1998, it wasn't even called the Nationwide Series. It was the Bush Series. So, All right, let's go to qualifying. I'm sure I'll have to make a pit stop at some point, but I'll do that off camera for you. We'll run on one or two laps, get a comparison, and then make some adjustments. Thank you guys so much again for tuning in. I really do appreciate all the support. Be sure to check out some of my NASCAR 06 videos. I, I'm really having a fun time with that. and Those can tend to be a little more entertaining than these videos, even though the quality isn't quite there. But those, those videos definitely, the, you get a lot more done. I, with the race lengths, I can usually get two, sometimes even three races in, in a video, so. I've, I've considered shortening the race length in, um, in this game. Um, I haven't really gotten any feedback from anybody yet. Nobody seems to be commenting on my videos, so. I'll, I'll consider it. We'll see how long this race takes. I really don't want to have you guys sitting around for 40 or so minutes. Watching, watching me just log laps, really, so. I might shorten the races. We'll see. So our first lap was a 32.58. I really don't know where that is in comparison to some of my uh, competitors here. Uh, Casey Mears is over a second faster than us. And I messed up this lap, so I'm not, I'm not going to improve on this lap, that's for sure. So I'm going to come into the pits and I will see you on the other side. Alright, we are back out on the track. I made a wedge adjustment. I adjusted our air pressure like usual. And I actually put some more tape on the grill. I want to see if that can help us go a little faster here. I usually don't mess with the tape that much because I'm not really familiar with how that affects the car. Um, Outside of the generic, you know, NASCAR and Fox saying, Oh, if you add more tape to the grill, it'll make it faster. Yeah, I really, that really doesn't help me that much. So let's see where this lap is. Uh, as you can see, we're over four tenths slower than everybody. So, we really need to improve. Let's see what this lap is. We improved a little bit. A very little bit. So I'm going to try to run it in a little deeper in this corner. Oh, well. I don't know if we're going to be able to improve on this too much, unfortunately. That's a little frustrating, but it is what it is. Once we get into draft, we should be in better shape. Oh, well, that was much slower. We'll, we'll give it one more shot. But this is going to be our last shot, I think, on these tires, so... I'm not making another pit stop. If we qualify last, we qualify last. Greg Biffle is going to impede our progress on this lap, and I'm not too thrilled with it. But maybe we can get a draft off of him. That would be beneficial. 
All right, we did improve a little bit. That's all we're gonna get probably. 40th, I would assume we're multiple seconds off of the leader. Yep, we're almost two full seconds off from the leader. Um, let's just move on to the race then. It's a night race. I think this might be our first night race. So, we're gonna turn it over to Rick Allen and the M NBC Sports Gang. Everything is bigger in Texas. And that statement couldn't be more true for Texas Motor Speedway. Texas is a mile and a half D-shaped oval that creates exciting racing action all the way around. Also, check out the Big Hoss TV on the backstretch. That's the largest HD TV in the world. All right, largest TV in the world on the backstretch. I, I believe I said that in the sponsorship races, which was well, this was one of the tracks we had to do there, along with, I think it was Kansas. All right, we got Eric Jones in a different scheme. Where we were three wide with Jones in a net here, but I'm going to let them go by and get on to the bottom here. 43 laps. 18 laps on fuel. Yeah, that, that should be... Oh, gosh. We might have to make multiple pit stops in this race. I'm trying to do mental math in my head, but I'm not doing a very good job of it. I apologize to all those math teachers that I just offended there. Yeah, we'll definitely have to do two stops, I believe. Because 17 and 17 is 34. No, nope, never mind. My math was wrong again. I think we'll only have to do two stops. Or well, one stop, I mean. First my math is wrong and now I'm saying wrong words. Maybe I should go back to elementary school. How about that? Alright, we passed. Uh, that was Jones, right? Yeah. I'll, I'll have to leave the board up there. We're going to dive it in deep, get underneath Castle. And the bounty and a net. There's some smoke and oh, there's an accident. At least I thought there was an accident. I thought I saw a car spinning in all that smoke. I I don't know exactly what it was. All right, so we passed Brian Ellis and Bobby Labonte again. Now we're on the outside of Clint Boyer here. There. See if we can make the outside line work here. Then we got Casey Mears. The AI in this game are really unpredictable in the uh, dog legs on the front stretch. They're really un unpredictable, so I have to be careful and give them plenty of room. Oh gosh. Oh no. Please be a car. Oh, we're flipping. We're flipping and there's still no caution. There we go. Oh my gosh. Oh my. We're going to have to come in for repairs, no doubt. Maybe we can use this as some fuel mileage, but... That, that was the worst crash I've ever had. In NASCAR Heat Evolution. So we paid it for repairs. That might play into our fuel strategy a little bit. I, I doubt it, though. So now we're just basically restarting this race from scratch. We're starting 40th again. That, that was bad. I don't even remember how that got started. I was just so mesmerized by the fact that we blew over. All right, we're getting off to a slightly better start than last time. All right, we're just going to run into the back of Boyer there. But yeah, oh, I remember how it happened. I, I went on the high line trying to pass Boyer with Casey Mears, and I hit the wall. 
and came right back down the, down the track into oncoming traffic. But they took forever to throw that caution. I was upside down and flipping and the green flag was still out. So that if you needed any more proof that NASCAR Heat Evolution caution detection is broken, that would be your proof right there. But we're making up some good ground here. We're getting around Ryan Ellis. This will be for the 30th position. We've already made up 10 positions since the restart. We're on fresher tires than everybody, so I, I hope we can take advantage of that while we have them. Because they'll be pitting earlier than I will, so they'll have the fresher tires at that point, too. No, I was just rethinking that math in my head that I screwed up on earlier, and I, I think I screwed up on my correction, though, too. Because we have to pit on lap, like, 20, and then lap 40. But now that we pit under that caution for damage repair, we might be able to make it to the end. I think we can make it to the end if we do some fuel conservation. That would be nice. Um, I hope they don't throw out a... Uh, stupid caution to prevent that from happening, but we could be in a really good position. Obviously, I don't have the car to do anything um, to get any better, but nonetheless, we'll hope, see if things work. I just realized I forgot to change my sponsorship goals. I, I set it up to top 15 for uh, Martinsville, I believe. But I forgot to change them. I, even, I think I even started on that screen. So I would remember to change them, and I didn't. Alright, we're just kind of racing with Matt DiBattadetto. Got Ricky Stenhouse right up ahead. But I can't seem to get around them. We pulled away from whoever's behind us, Brian Scott. But we just haven't been able to get around the bad dad out here. But we got Ricky Stenhouse, who's pretty slow right now, so maybe we can get around him. Alright, we're on the outside of the bad We were briefly on the outside of Stenhouse. Uh, up against the better Zeno. We're not going to be able to get the pass. We just can't get the run off the corner. Like you would expect on the outside line. Alright. So for a brief time around the better Zeno, let's see if I can get around Stenhouse too. Oh no, wall, wall, wall. And then the better Zeno just hit me to... To make it just a little bit worse, my favorite driver hitting me. But Newman got back around us, but he was ahead of us before. He must have been in that wreck. Because he started 40th with us. Alright, we're getting back around Brian Scott again. Eleven laps on fuel. We're on lap 18, so we can make it to lap 29, probably 30 if I do things right. So yeah, we'll be able to make it to the end, no problem, because I think it was 17 laps on a full tank of gas. So I, I don't think we'll have any problems with, with making it to the end. Hopefully that uh, um, can help us get a good finish there, because we should only have to make one more stop. Everybody else should, according to my calculations, have to make two. That caution might have helped them I'm not, enough, I'm not sure, but... Alright. I have been trying lap after lap to get around to Benedetto and Stenhouse on the outside, and that's just not working. So we're going to try to get on the inside here. 
There we go. We got out the inside of both of them and we pack them with relative ease. Now we got Michael McDowell up ahead. 27. I, unless if our fuel mileage strategy works out, we're probably not going to get the top 15. So, thank you guys again for tuning in. I believe I've said that already, but especially in these times where I'm just running laps around, I like to converse with you guys. So, this won't be going up until after uh, the next week, but I haven't recorded since, um, since Memorial Day weekend. At least this game, I recorded some NASCAR 06 earlier today, but that's kind of on the same schedule. So, I'll talk a little bit about uh, the Memorial Day weekend. We got I was very happy for Takuma Sato winning the Indy 500. Very deserving. He's been in the series for what, like eight years now, and that, and I, I think it's his first win. He might have won on a road course somewhere, or I don't know, but I'm very happy for him. It's well deserved. Um, I was pleasantly surprised with how well Fernando Alonso was doing before he had the motor failure. I thought it would be a little tougher transition. I, I know Formula One to IndyCar is def definitely a lot easier than NASCAR to IndyCar, but Fernando Alonso did an excellent job, and I think he would have been in position for a win if he hadn't blown the engine. But, like I said, very happy for Takuma Sato. And then for the Coke 600, I'm also very happy for Austin Dillon and Richard Childress. It was a Good feel good. It was a feel good win for them. I, I'm not a big fan of Austin Dillon, uh, mainly because I, I uh, don't like the fact that you know their granddaddies basically paved their way all the way through NASCAR. But it's part of the game. It's, you know, all the big families are able to do that. Earnhardt, Petty, Allison, all of those big families have no problem with getting their children in race cars, so. Austin, I think, is a lot more deserving than Ty Dillon, but I was just really happy for Austin Dillon's crew chief. That was his first race on top of the pit box. They uh, just replaced Lover Labby, who got fired after the All-Star race, so that was a really good call for him. I was very happy for him. I'm happy for Austin Dillon, too. I mean, I, I'm always happy when there's a first-time winner. I'm always happy when somebody besides, you know, the guys who win five, six races every every year wins. So, so we're just kind of playing cat and mouse right now with uh, Bernard and McDowell behind us. I believe some people have come on the pit road, but... Um, we won't be for quite some time, I believe. Our right front is dying. We have four laps. Our right front is dead. So we got to take more care, care of that. And immediately as I started to do so, I got the Benny Nettle right on my back and I lose McDowell. But we are passing people who come on the pit road. I'm, I'm hoping to stay out long enough to lead a lap and get that bonus point. I mean, right now, we're in a position to possibly get in the chase on points. So, I all of, every point counts. Especially since we're going to have a pretty crappy finish here, I would presume. So, if we can get a bonus point for leading a lap, I would be very pleased with that. So we're fourth right now. The yellow's out. out, so I have to pit now. Um, no repair. Um, I need to up the tire pressure on the right front. But, yep. Full can of fuel. We're back to 23rd. I don't know if people got car to lap down. I would assume some people got car to lap down by that. But it was timed well enough that I don't think a lot of people got caught a lap down. 
So that kind of just threw strategy out the window for the most part. Um, how many laps are there left? There's uh, 11 laps, so definitely a shorter run on the tires. So I probably could have taken some tire pressure out, air pressure out, to maybe get some more grip. But the only real oh, Eric Jones, what are you doing? What are you doing? I was on the apron already, and you were completely shoving me off the track. Let's get around you and get far, far away from you. Looks like Jimmy Johnson's being uh, is stuck in traffic, I should say. Got Michael, uh, who is that? No, that's um, David Reagan in 23. I'll get the leaderboard up again. I would be happy with a top 25 right where we are now. If we can get a top 20, I would be extremely happy with that as well. But I don't think we're going to be able to get that sponsorship objective. Especially now that uh, fuel strategy has been thrown out the window. If I could have gone one more lap, I could have put most of the field a lap down, I feel. So, if I could have gotten one more lap out of that before caution came out, I, I would have been golden. But, unfortunately, that's NASCAR Heat Evolution for you. They throw caution to prevent you getting ahead on pit strategy. Alright, we got another yellow. Um, I definitely have no need to pit. There are some people who decided to pit. We moved up three positions. Got another restart. I, I'm terrible at restarts, so hopefully I don't um, throw away a good finish here. Now we got Denny Hamlin right behind us. I, I don't know how that works exactly. How he must have pitted or something. Are we really that? that close to the end of the lead lap? I'm not sure, but we're getting passed by all these cars who are supposed to be faster than us. I'm just trying to figure out how they got this far back to begin with. I should not be getting passed by Michael McDowell right now. I'll say that right now. Four laps to go. I'm three wide situation here. I was not happy with that. I said I'd be happy with a top 20 finish, and I will be happy with a top 20 finish, but with these faster cars on the inside line right now, I don't think I'll be able to achieve that top 20 finish, but now we're even outside the top, no, now we're 25th, so we need to hold this position right here. We got a really good run there. I'm not quite sure how that happened. I didn't really do anything differently. And we got a terrible run on this. How are all these guys behind us? And on the lead lap. These guys would have surely passed us on the last restart if they were on the lead lap. So now we're in 30th. Still there. If rubber banding's on, I sure hope they turn it off by now. Because I should not be getting passed by Michael on, that, on the outside. Greg Biffle should not be coming this fast. I have passed all these cars at least twice today. So there is no reason for them to be ex so much faster than me right now. No, Ricky Stenhouse, you are not passing me. Neither are you, Trevor Bain. Neither are you, Chase Elliott. I'll wreck the field if I need to. I want a top... Alright. Caution has occurred after the white flag. I don't care. I'm 32nd. I wasn't going to get any better than 31st. There's your first example of me raging.
I apologize to Ricky Stonehouse and Chase Elliott, who I ruined, but they weren't going to finish much better than that anyway. So we got $9,000 for the race and $5,000 for my primary. So I highly doubt that's going to do anything. Our point standings are definitely going to be pretty crappy. Yep, we lost four positions. Well, technically three were tied with Greg Biffle. Pace cars off. So. Alright. That was a very smooth ending to the race. Let's see if there's anything for us to take a look at. Nope. Bristol is up next. I don't think we have enough money for any upgrades at this point. 50000 nope. Brit we should do well at Bristol. I, you would think. We did well at Martinsville, so I would assume Bristol would be pretty similar. Alright. <sighs> that race is over. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. And if you want to see more content from ATF Gaming, hit that red su subscribe button down below. It really means a lot for me. Um, early days in the channel, every subscriber, every view, every like means something to me. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next episode. Bye.